So uh, I carried on into, into Tretton to get uh, specific orders from the colonel. And he said, well, right, I want you to defend that position uh, and hold it until 6 o'clock this evening when we're going to be relieved by a regular brigade. John Shepherd's troop, a bakist in a long forsvarsrekke, bestående of 1200 men. Now they will stop 7000 Tyske soldiers, who are stuttered of artillery, stitzwagner and fly. I den aller fremste stillingen gjør David Barry seg klar. Well, we were sitting in the wood by the side of the road at Tretton. And um, German planes were flying up and down that valley. Because we'd never been, we'd never been under fire before from, from aircraft, so there it was. Well, we were told there to take up a defensive position for the Germans coming up the road. But of course, when the Germans come up with tanks, what can you do? Just sit there. No, I never fired a bullet. No, not one. No, it was crazy. It was crazy. Tyskerne setter alt in i angrepet. Stridsvognene rykker fritt nordover. Brittene har ingenting å stoppe dem med. We could all hear them. The sound goes right across the valley there. Very distinct. There was no other sound. They were quite, quite small tanks, I think, but very effective when, when there is no opposition, particularly when there's no opposition. Time, everything was collapsing around you, and uh, we'd only got half the unit, so the other half had been virtually decimated on the other side of the lake. And uh, we decided that the best thing to do was sort of pack up and head north, you know, it, as fast as you can, which we did. Tyskerne står nå ved 13 centrum. I den bakre forsvarslinjen ligger John Shepherds tropp på Timan. De utgjør siste skanse. And then we could see, I could see through our binoculars in the distance, uh, on the edge of a wood, a, a, a section of, of, of Germans advancing. And they came down, and then followed by a platoon, followed by a company, followed by a larger mass, which was obviously the battalion, coming around the edge of this, uh, an absolute copybook picture of a, a, a battalion in an attack, just as it should be from the drill book.
then the next thing we saw was um, two tanks. And on the other side of the, of, of the valley was um, a, a platoon of uh, Sherwood Foresters. And the two tanks were set so that they could ambush them as they came through. With the tank be behind us, practically, uh, uh, I said, right, has anybody fired the anti-tank rifle? Because we hadn't. So uh, if nobody else could do it, there's only one thing I have to do it myself. I fired at the first tank and it went ka-bang, clang, rather like hitting a, a falling plate on the range. And they opened up straight away with a machine gun. And then we came back. So I put uh, three rounds into each each tank, given one at a time, uh, left and right, left and right, left and right. And then they stopped. So obviously uh, they were finished for the time. Frank Watt who, who, uh, was with me. He uh, he'd got a Bren gun and he was firing at the at the at the uh, artillery guns, which we could see. he didn't realise was that this box of magazines we'd got was filled was for shooting at aircraft and it had got tra one in five tracer. So although it could he could see his fall of shot, it also gave our position away. And a few seconds later he was shot and killed. The bullet came through the through the wooden wall and killed him. And then all hell let loose. Two tanks came up the road and absolutely riddled this wooden building. So I hit one. and I fired again. But of course, firing into the front of the tank meant that uh, the gun wouldn't penetrate, I don't think. Uh, and it fired back at us. And then somebody came running in and said, we're on fire, we're on fire. The whole place went up. It was just an inferno. So 
so we dragged our wounded out. We had several wounded in there. And as we got them outside, we, um, the Germans were there. Uh, and uh, they, uh, the German uh, sanitators, they call them, stretcher bearers, we call them, were binding up our wounded. As if a few the war is over. <laughs> and that was that. Then I realised that there wasn't anybody there, they'd gone. They'd evacuated the whole place and they'd left us. We were the sacrificial lamb, you know. De nyankomne brittiske troppene oppretter forsvarsposisjoner ved Kvam. Den 25. april starter det tyske angrepet. For første gang siden de alliertes ankomst til Norge dreier det seg nå om et virkelig slag hvor brittene faktisk greier å slå tilbake. Bak kamplinjene ligger bårebærer Bill Granger. Han venter på å gå i illen for å hente sårede. Once the, once the fighting started, we could actually see our comrades drop him, which was, which um, we all felt, we all felt was pretty drastic to see, uh, see our own comrades being killed. When we ran up to, to bring the casualties back, I saw a, a man sitting behind the house. He was in that position, holding his head with his hand, but he'd been shot in the head, and he died there behind this house. And they just left it, just had to leave him there. It was a sense of fear. spread firing and, no uh, and noise uh, within the village and, and, and soldiers dropping. That was, and all the time there was the sound, sound of uh, uh, rifle fire and eventually the gun, uh, uh, shell, uh, gun fire. I remember there was a, quite a strong smell of blood, dried blood. We were just frightened of what was going to happen, what's going to happen next. Kampene raser i to dager. 